Hey, um, just got a new microphone and all that, and this um, video, I'm just going to be doing these all in one take. So, um, if you expect, like, the greatest quality production, I apologize. And anyone else watching the video, if you think that my video uh, kind of sucks, I know it might, but eh, it's just uh, me trying to get back into making videos. With that said, hope you enjoy the show. So, let's get some things out of the way. Yes, I am gushing over games that I like, shut up. Yes, I know that not everyone's gonna be interested in all the following games, but whatever. Legit, this one was interesting to me since I wanted to recommend games to people I had to figure out which stuff would be recommendable. Like how expensive the game is, like how much content it has, how are the controls, how good the fan base is maybe. Okay, maybe not that last part. Um, but how accessible it is to newcomers, and maybe it's even some veteran catering wouldn't hurt. Basically, all the crap you would say to try to get someone to play a game you fanboy over about. And, you know what, let's let's have an arbitrary dollar limit for these games, like... Um... Ah, 200. That would be a good one. That way I can't recommend something like, oh, I don't know, Rhythm Thief for $5,000, and laugh at the peasants who don't have it. <sighs> but we are going to be mainly talking about eShop based prices for my limits. But if the prices tend to go down, I will be mentioning them from what I see and have noted. It is kind of beautiful, isn't it? Okay, let's set the scene with some actual history involving this franchise. 2012, fourth iteration of a game comes out with generally positive reviews and was the fastest selling iteration in Japan, releasing in North America in 2013 of October talk about a Halloween treat. However, due to having a difficult time finding its footing in the evolving video game market, they began bankruptcy just one month later. Keep in mind, this is only two years after their financial restructuring forcing them to focus on Harvest Moon and Room Factory instead of No More Heroes, merely because it didn't sell as well as those games. Keeping eShop... Ugh, I mean, keeping Europe from enjoying the game for an entire year. However, it was released for the eShop. However, with the Nintendo Switch and the company finding the confidence to re-release another installment of the franchise, in the meantime, however, they gave us a remastered version of the fourth installment for the Switch to tide us over in the meantime. And how did people react? Honestly, it looks like this it was meant for the 3DS and they decided, <laughs> oh no, we'll Room just put it on the Switch instead. Was Room Factory? Or, you know, probably a mobile game or something. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh my god! If I want an anime, I'll just turn on some... Get out of here! Oh! Hey, hey guys! Rune Factory 5! If you thought Rune Factory was good! What the fuck is this? This looks like some weeb shit! Oh wait, no, 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 no! Fire Emblem! Speaking of weeb shit, I want Fire Emblem! Well, let's just say I'm just, just not enthusiastic about some responses. Oh, Naga, just let it go. It's been a dang year already. My salt will not be contained! Ah. <sighs> Room Factory 4 definitely deserved more love than it was given. Being a Harvest Moon game, but with actual exploration, instead of a watered-down version like in Stardew Valley. Basically, take the already unnervingly addicting gameplay of the story of Seasons, Harvest Moon, and Stardew Valley, but add in the ability to beat the crap out of some monsters, and you got yourself a pretty good game. With the total of 11 regular story dungeons, 4 mini dungeons, 2 post-game dungeons, which will absolutely just maul a shoe if you're not prepared, which, if you are into some action parts, you'd be thrilled to enjoy since you aren't restricted to just farming. Monster taming, which can extend to most of the bosses, surprisingly. Crafting your own weapons and actual exploration, and what can go wrong? Also, lovable characters have more NPC dialogue than Stardew Valley, but at $30 it isn't exactly cheap, but you do get quite a bit of content for your buck. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you can grow your own dungeons and can actually make them difficult depending on how well you grow them, meaning that you can decide to make your game pretty hard. Okay, legit the only criticism that could be given is the graphics, but that could be chalked up to it being a 3DS game, which to be honest, I couldn't care about since I am still enjoying it. Clocking in more hours on this than a lot of other games. 
Okay, clarification. I know you can buy the next game on the iPhone for $7 instead of 20 but shut up. I prefer playing games on a console instead of an iPhone. With that out of the way, let's talk about Moranian Tavern Story. Oh, I got that on my first try. Being an interesting concept where instead of gaining experience through fighting monsters, you gain experience by eating dishes. But in order to make cash, you have to sell dishes, so you can't just focus on yourself like Nikocado Avocado. <laughs> Uh, it's an interesting game that has all the RPG mechanics you all know and love, with the main benefit of battling enemies being getting new magic and ingredients for more dishes. The story involves your brother accidentally releasing the God of Poverty, who makes everything for you go to... Um, it goes bad. It, it, it goes bad. Which ends up having your mansion and restaurant taken over by a jerk, who is from the first game, Adventure Bar Story. Back on topic, this game is technically a sequel, but you don't need to play the first one to appreciate the game. Even if I want the first one to be ported to the Switch already, as well as the Adventure Bar Dungeon game, thanks to the 3DS eShop closing. Oh well, you end up getting more party members and explore more as you go on, and the game even tells you how to activate events to move on with the story, as there is an in-game store where you spend rare currency jewels that you can get to gain new items, and no, this game does not have microtransactions. It's basically like most other RPGs, but the unique concept alone is definitely worth a look. And if you want to get a game like this, but don't like the $2 price, there's a game that takes place earlier on the 3DS for like 7 bucks, if you can buy it that quickly. I will say I better be seeing some more Lydia fan art. This is the most expensive on the list at $60, but I've seen this game go on sale for $30, so you might be pleasantly surprised when going to buy this game, since it might not be $60 on the eShop. With that said, everyone welcome to the Isle of Siren! I think that's how you pronounce it. A location based on the Saronic Islands at Archipelago in Greece, not the Bermuda Islands, though it does have that dangerous and mysterious Bermuda Triangle feel to it. And yes, I kind of feel like I had to mention the entire whole um, geographical history about the game because, well, the East series does have um, look. It's based on a lot of real-world locations for a lot of its games, including the prison city Balduc from Nine, based on Lutetia, France, or Paris. And the jokes about Paris being horrible to live in write themselves here. Like, I don't know, Adol's adventure here mainly boiled down to him visiting here, and then him wishing to leave. Or, maybe, this one's a better one, uh, they must have complete confidence in this prison if they don't think a Frenchman is going to run away. <laughs> Lucia's in Paris, I completely forgot about that. Uh, crap. Uh, back on topic, though, you get crash land on Desert Island, which might be an interesting idea for a game, having the villagers pitch in to make a basic village that progresses as you go, which makes it much more interesting. Having a wide variety of locations be gorgeous, like oh my god. And at even the low end graphics, it makes the aisle something that would never be boring. And having a story that is actually good, unlike a lot of Final Fantasy games I guess and full of turns that can keep you on your seat and will actually make sure it drags you in, kicking and screaming so you'll be stuck in that game for about 40 hours. And yes, I know, there's the typical slimes and stuff like that, but in this game, you face off against dinosaurs. Yeah, dinosaurs are the main threat on this aisle, with them actually attacking your village later, so you had to defend it. If you actually see, um... If you see the appeal in this game, you can see why I annoy my friends to buy it. Oh well. The controls are very smooth, the gameplay is as high speed as Dynasty Warriors, but you don't mash buttons nearly as much, and the gameplay isn't brain dead. And because I'm on Josh Scorcher's Discord, I might be a little bit ballsy to say that. But, considering I'm a nobody, I think I'm in the clear. <laughs> For yeah, predictable to make a joke. Uh, Golf Story, uh, one of the most well-known games on the list for a good reason, because the game's just that good. 
Well, then the it was released during the Switch's start. Even then, it probably had to come um, had to deal with the competition from what other indie games was near the start? I think no, not Hollow Knight. Um, crap! I, I know. Frack. The concept of a golfing game, though, basically is just going around till you are the very best like nobody ever was. To put balls into holes is your real test to make innuendos is my cause. Honestly, the concept is very unique, though. Oh, not the golfing game. Just going through Australia and it not being full of things that want to kill you. But you go through seven, or actually eight, uh, different courses, which can include a beach, spooky house, a rundown course, a prehistoric area, and you uh, basically just get your clubs and start whacking balls. Also, you do get stat level ups like in Mario Golf Story, but you also throw in some side quests that let you get some cool rewards, and even some occasional disc golf and you got yourself a banger game. Throwing some comedy that's actually comedy, and you got yourself a story that's not one to forget. And for a good example of the game's comedy, I would check out the rap battle from Tidy Parks. Well, Warren Grove, which is based on crappy cheap golf courses. And while I mention this, Skimming Woods are freaking broken. Legit, they are broken, and if I could make a top 10 overpowered things, well, don't expect that to be on there, but it would be somewhat of an honorable mention, I guess. And this is the last uh, segment of this video where I talk about this final game. And if you, um, you'll have to forgive me because it's like 5 o'clock in the morning right now. I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been up a little bit <laughs> too late. So, um, this last one's basically, um, Gao Cal Love 100 Days. It's, um, a visual novel. It's like, uh, 12 bucks. And basically, you, um, you're, um, a student in China who, uh, just got a girlfriend during the last, uh, 100 days of, um, of the year. Or not the year, but the last 100 days of his school life. So, he has to basically balance having a girlfriend as well as passing his finals because... It's in China, and China, the uh, uh, culture of China, when it comes to academia, I believe is a lot more um, focused on a good grade than people in America are. I know for a fact that they are, they take uh, grades a lot more seriously than people in the United States. So the stakes would be a bit more appropriate. So the stakes would be a bit more appropriate, uh, being a very high-stake uh, game, I guess you can say. Like, some people in the U.S. might not see it as a high-stake, um, you know, mission, but uh, people in China might just do that, or people that have uh, high pressures to get good grades, so... But that's enough about that. We uh, also have a decent cast of characters. There's Stom, Jalhan, Kaki... Mooksin, your girlfriend, um, Joey, your teachers, mom and dad, and all that. Um, you have to balance, you know, keeping a good grade, being relaxed, and, well, having a decent relationship with your girlfriend. While it can be a bit frustrating, it's also a good um, experience as to see what studying is like over there. I, I don't know exactly everything about, um, you know, the culture in China, I'll admit that. But if this is the detail of what studying over there is like, I gotta say, it's pretty darn effective. And, well, I, I'll admit, I kinda do like the game a bit. I mean, I got every single ending, and I'm actually in the middle of producing a video of um, a guide on how to get all the endings. I mean, granted, it's going to be a bit more higher quality, but, you know, on this channel, I try to strive to give you some decent videos. It's going to be edited a bit, but you, you can see a bit of a difference in quality in comparison to here. But, 
Yeah, that would be a total of 60 for East 8. Well, 30 if it's on sale. Uh, 30 plus with uh, Roof Factory 4, so that's 90. Marie and Tavern Story would be a, an additional 20, so that's 110. Golf Story would be, I think, 20 more, so that's 130. And Gal Cal Love 100 Days would be an extra... Extra 10. So that would be a total of 150. Congratulations! You now have a five good games that you can get for $200 or less. I'll admit, you know, my recommendations might not be for everyone, but I hope at least one video game that I recommended was, you know, pretty decent. In any case, stay tuned for the Gal Cal Love 100 Days video where I finally do a guide on how to... Get all 60 plus endings. That took me a while to get. Also, stay tuned because I'm actually getting back into making videos when I can. In any case, ciao!